as I said, the Bible as a nail, based on Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 11. So we know that the word of God is very, very important to the life of the believer. Someone actually has said that it is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and it should definitely fill the memory. It should be the rule, the heart, uh, the, the, the guide, the, the in feet. And so, uh, you know, the word of God for uh, folks is really likened to a light, a seed, a, a fire, a hammer, a mirror, a goad. And as we want to consider tonight, a nail. And so in Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 12 and verse 11, the Bible uh, says, and again, as always, we use the King James Bible in every one of our uh, Bible studies and sermons. The Bible says, the words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies which are given from one uh which are given from one shepherd all right so a nail <laughs> for we want let, let read i'm going to read a poem to you right now for the want of a nail a shoe was lost for the want of a shoe a horse was lost for the want of a horse a rider was lost for the want of a rider a battle was lost for the want of a battle a kingdom was lost all for the want of a nail see although it seems uh, initially to be very insignificant nails are really important in our society and folks there's no question as to the importance of the word of god of course but i want us to consider it as it is compared in this passage here that i read to the nail so first of all if you're taking notes Note, point number one, consider the form, the form of the nail. Nails vary in size and in, they vary in shape as we know them. But basically, each nail has a point, a body, and a head. And this book should be considered as a box of nails. Okay, so think about the Bible as a book because each verse, or as a nail, rather, because each verse has a point, each verse has a contextual meaning and an application. For example, the Bible is full of pointed exhortations, appeals, warnings, and cautions. These passages are sharp and they penetrate the heart of man when they're hammered in the hand of faith. Let's look at uh, the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 37 the bible says now when they heard this they were pricked in their heart and said unto peter and to the rest of the apostles man and brethren what shall we do when he even preached the bible it says here we go in acts chapter 7 and verse 54 it says when they heard these things they were cut to the heart right they were cut to the heart and now in Hebrews chapter 4, in verse 12, it says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So consider now the function of a nail, all right? The function of a nail. That's point number two. We know that nails are used to hold things together or to strengthen. And this is also explained in is, is Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 7. You can look that up yourself. But it is the word of God, folks, which holds individuals together. Folks, we know that many people are falling apart because of the constant storms of suffering, pain, and temptation, especially in these last few months. We know that, that this pandemic, whether it be the actual sickness or maybe the consequences of the sickness, meaning uh, business uh, affected, their jobs were affected, or their loved ones were affected, or, or, or you know, friends and family lost. So many different things. People have been suffering. 
for this and many other reasons. It's just part of the world, right? Suffering, pain, temptation. So how can a person find the strength to live in these days of uncertainty? Well, men don't. Many, many don't. I mean, they cannot cope with the daily pressures of life. And, and that's just that's just a normal situation. However, God's word is filled with promises that we can claim in times of trouble. And, and I'm going to read uh, a few portions of, of Bible verses here uh, that, that we can claim these promises. And I hope and, and pray that these will be refreshing for your soul tonight. So uh, listen as I read these promises, because these are, these are promises that can definitely bring you that strength that we need in time of need. For example, in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth, which strengtheneth me. And in a few verses down, it says in verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, the first part says, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. And if we go to Psalm 23, that beautiful Psalm, verse 4, in the first part it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He says, I will fe fear no evil. And then he continues by saying, For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. See, these are very comforting words from God's word. Amen. These are all promises. Now, you see, it is God's word that holds families together. You have all read the statistics on marriages these days. I don't have to tell you that, uh, you know, marriage is under attack by the devil in society itself. Some even say, let's get married on a quick impulse and then we'll uh, live on love, because even if we have nothing, materially speaking, at least we have each other. Well, honestly, that sounds very good and, and, and fine, but unfortunately, a marriage needs a lot more uh, than just, quote unquote, love in order to survive the attacks of the enemy in this world. Folks, it is the principles of God's word that holds marriages and families together. The rest is only true in fairy tales. The Word of God instructs us on every aspect of the family. The wives, the husbands, the fathers, the mothers, the children, of course. The Word of God instructs us in each and every aspect, each and every role of the family member. It is the Word of God that holds churches together and keeps them from drift, drifting along with every wind of doctrine that comes and goes uh, just about every day. It is the word of God that holds nations together as well. For example, in Psalm 33, in verse 12, the Bible says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. We look at Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Excuse me, the Bible says, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Folks. I love America. This is the country where I was born, and, and I'm just very, very proud to be an American. However, I'm sure that God is grieved over most Americans and, and the way that, that we live and the way that we kind of put God, you know, as a second or third option in our lives a lot of times. As we get farther and farther away from biblical values in this country. I'm afraid America will fall apart. I hope not, but we need to get back to God. Amen. That brings me to my main point number three, and that is consider the fidelity, the fidelity of the nail. You see, the real value of a nail is seen as it accomplishes its purpose. Folks, we can be assured that God's word is faithful, faithful. Let's look at what Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11 has to say about this. The Bible says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. These are, 
These are the words of God himself. He says, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. I love that verse. So God's word, folks, is faithful because, number one, it is the product of the Holy Spirit's inspiration. You see, this is not just a collection of wise sayings written by some wise man many, many years ago. This is actually the word of God. The Apostle Peter, he wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21, he said, for the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of men. Now listen to this. He says, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Folks, it's very important that we understand that our attitude toward the Bible ought to be as that of the Thessalonians. Let's look at what they uh, they, they did in, in second excuse me, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, the Bible says, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, he says, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, he says, this is Paul's talking to Thessalonians, he says, ye received it not as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Let me tell you, the word of God, it is the instrument of the Holy Spirit's work. Let's look at what uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 says. It says, so faith, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see, so the word of God is the instrument of the Holy Spirit's work. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 tells us that this book is the sword of the spirit the spirit of god uses the word of god to bring about conviction in the heart of man and draws him to christ i'll say that again the spirit of god uses the word of god to bring about conviction in our hearts and it draws us to christ the third reason is that it is the reflection of the spirit's nature you see an artist's work of art is but a reflection of his her character. And the same is true of an author. You could not confuse the works of, I don't know, Hemingway, for example, with the works of Shakespeare. They're just different. However, look at what Psalm has to say. In Psalm 119, in verse 138, it says, Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and are very faithful. Testimonies thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. You see, God's word, God's word is purposeful. Purposeful. It has a purpose. Why? First of all, because it produces a conviction. You see, before one can be saved, we must realize that we are lost. That's just the reality. And the word of God cuts through all of our pretenses, and it reveals the wickedness of our own heart. For example, let's remember the Pharisee and the publican that is mentioned in the New Testament. How about the prodigal son? Or even Peter, after he had denied Christ three, uh, three times that night that Christ was, uh, you know, betrayed. Or even the multitudes at Pentecost. You see, the word of God produces conversion, conversion. Men must be saved, and that cannot be accomplished apart from the word of God. In Romans chapter 10, verses 13 and 14, these are the last two verses that I'm going to read here tonight. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is a call for you, my friend, if you're here tonight, if you had not trusted Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior. Let me tell you, the Bible promises, talking about God's promises, that if you or whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, how then, he says, how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That is the message. And the preaching of the gospel 
step by step. So, folks, the Word of God produces conformity. You see, a Christian means that we are Christ like. In Romans chapter 8 and verses 28 and 29, it tells us that all things work together for good to them that love God so that we might be conformed to the image of Christ. That's what I mean by by saying that the word of God produces conformity. We need to conform to the image of Christ. Paul tells us in in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 that to be conformed to the image of Christ we must let the word of God, the word of Christ, dwell in us richly. So you see, folks, in conclusion, the words of the wise are goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. That's our, our text tonight, right, in Ecclesiastes. But you see, God's word has a purpose and function, just as a nail does. Word of God is faithful to accomplish its purpose. So tonight, I plead with you, allow God's word to work in your heart. Some of you may be falling apart spiritually. Well, you need to allow the word of God to strengthen you tonight. Others here uh, are, are, are probably not fast and firmly with the word of God, and, and you need to fill your heart with the word, and you need to be anchored in your faith. Still, others need to allow the Word of God to shape you and mold you into the image of Christ. And others altogether need to allow the Word of God to pierce your lives and and to reveal your need of Christ in your life. In other words, if you have not trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then you need to surrender your life. You need to ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and ask Him to be your Savior. Won't you let God have His way? with you in your life tonight. If you have any need, if you have any uh, any needs for prayer or any advice on God's word, please let us know. We'll be more than honored to, to guide you through God's word. And we have a couple of different opportunities that you can worship with us. Obviously, tonight, Bible study is only virtual, but you can join us here every, every uh, Wednesday night on Bible uh, study time on either Facebook or YouTube Live. And then Sundays, we meet in person in our beautiful sanctuary in the city of Miami and Kendall. And so you can join us in person or, of course, right here on Facebook or YouTube as well at 3 p.m. every Sunday afternoon. Sometimes we're running a little bit late, but you can still uh, look for us right there at 3 p.m. So we are honored and thrilled that you have decided to stop by. We've only been here for about 20 minutes. And that's every Wednesday we're here. And like I said, every Sunday afternoon as well. I hope and pray that the Lord, the Lord continues to bless you and your family. Please share and like this video with others as well. Thank you so much. Let's close with the word of prayer. Lord, thank you so much for the word that you have allowed us to open and study and treasure tonight. Lord, once again, if there's somebody that has watched this video that has not trusted you as personal Savior yet, we ask that you would convict our hearts accordingly. Whatever other need, Lord, may be out there or whatever a prayer request may be out there, Lord, we ask you that you would answer them according to your perfect will. Thank you so much for your love and kindness, for your grace and your mercy. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. May the Lord continue to bless you. You have a good night.